My talk, Community Chat, Social Listening for Audience Understanding, is about how you can use social data to really understand the different audiences that you're looking at. Um, so my name's Catherine Cook. Um, I'm Digital Insights Director at Mindshare, which is a media agency. Um, so essentially, um, I'm a social data analyst, like a lot of you. Um, I use social listening tools to scrape uh, hundreds and thousands of social mentions um, and analyze the conversations that people are having um, to gain insight for the clients that Mindshare works for. Um, and it's a really, really great data set. It's really rich. Um, you have all the comments that people post about. Um, you have all the imagery that they're sharing. Um, and you also have all the links that they're sharing. So a huge amount of information to analyze. Um, and it's at scale as well. You have um, millions and millions of posts on any different subject under the sun um, that you can think of. Um, and it's also voluntarily given. So um, the conversation is free of some of the bias that sometimes creeps in when you do more traditional types of research, uh, like surveys and stuff. So you have a great um, source there. Um, and most people leave it at that in terms of audience. They analyze the social data and come up with um, insights into the public or Twitter users, something like that. Um, there's a third element uh, to social media data, location, that's really, really important and actually allows you to start segmenting the data into different audience groups, which is something I think that social media lags behind other types of research in order to do. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about. Um, <coughs> and in order to do that, um, as said, <coughs> um, I'm going to use the subject of food. Um, so we have scraped over 10 million mentions of food in the UK on social media and segmented that into the different regions in the UK to start to try and understand if we can use social data to pull out differences in attitudes and opinions to food on a regional basis in the UK. Um, and there are broadly five different research techniques I've used to interrogate this data. Um, so I've looked at the data through um, the lens of brand reputation, uh, which brands are, are top and where. Um, trends, so different food trends, where are they popular across the UK, why is that? Uh, image, so uh, not just the text, but what the photos people are actually posting, what can we learn from that, how is that different? Uh, linguistic as well, so looking at the language people are using, and timescale as well, so all of those things basically um, over a number of years, because as we know, the great thing about social media data is you can collect it retrospectively and start to see how um, the situation has changed over time. Uh, and because I'm a researcher, um, I do like a good hypothesis. So I have um, changed those five uh, research techniques into specific questions that I'll answer for you. Um, so how does brand reputation differ based on associated topics in different parts of the UK? In which regions are food trends the most popular and why? Uh, what can we learn from people's aspirations um, from the images they post? Um, what does the language tell us about their attitudes? Um, and finally, how have these things changed over time? Uh, so we'll start with well-known food brand uh, Aldi. We've scraped uh, over 400,000 mentions of Aldi in the UK um, and segmented that into the different regions. Um, and essentially, we wanted to know the content of what people were saying about this brand in different parts of the country. Uh, so we've used um, some macros um, to count the most frequently used vocabulary and phrases to find out uh, what types of topics were coming up most frequently. And as you can imagine, um, the situation is quite different when you break down the conversation by region. So in London, uh, Aldi is very frequently compared to Waitrose and Sainsbury's, quite premium supermarkets, um, and salmon, quite a premium uh, product, is discussed. Whereas in the east of England, Mamia, which is a baby care range, is most valued. Um, West Midlands, it's kind of novelty items like trampolines. Um, and in Wales, it's all about the discounts, so kind of getting uh, really sort of um, good value food. So things like voucher come up a lot. So through social listening, we can see that um, Aldi is well known across the UK. It's talked about a lot. Um, but the content of those conversations and essentially what people value about that brand really differs quite a lot. And you can bring that out from the social data. Um, so we'll move on to trends. Um, so I've taken the food trend provenance, which broadly means um, taking an interest in where your food comes from, how it's produced. Um, and we wanted to understand, uh, with this particular trend, where it is most popular in the UK. Um, so again, we uh, scraped many, many mentions um, of provenance-related food conversation across the UK, and compared that to average levels of social conversation, and found that um, it's most frequently discussed um, in the in the southwest. It over-indexes there, and it kind of 
dis uh, the uh, interest in the subject kind of lessens as you go up the country, interestingly. Um, but the great thing about um, social media data, as I said before, is you can actually dig down and read the comments that people are saying about a topic like provenance. And when we started to do that, we started to realise it was a really broad topic and it actually means a huge amount of different things to different people. So what you can do is sub-segment your topic data into more specific themes, which is what we did, foraging, hyperlocal, fair trade, British produce and organic. And what we found is that foraging actually means very different things to different people in the country, uh, sorry, uh, provenance. Um, so in the southwest, uh, foraging came up a lot in the conversation. So people in Bristol organising foraging, um, mushroom hunting walks, stuff like that, suitably, suitably kind of hippie for that area. Uh, whereas in the West Midlands, um, people really uh, were talking about British produce. So provenance means buying British food that's produced in the UK. That's what they really cared about. So it's through that analysis, that real deep analysis of the conversation that you can understand the nuances behind a subject matter and really split that out um, into different audiences and different regions. Um, but obviously, as we know, especially for Instagram, it's not just um, about the comments that people are posting, it's about the imagery that they post. Um, and in fact, with Instagram, um, it's obviously a very aspirational channel, so you can get a real insight into how people wish to be perceived um, by what they're posting, regardless of whether or not that's actually reality. Um, and at Mindshare, we have developed a bespoke tool which um, uses AI to visually analyse uh, social media content. So regardless of um, what's been written in the post, it groups images by visual themes. So that could be something like colour or subject matter, it recognises people, that kind of thing. Um, so applying it to food, uh, we took a sample of Instagram content with hashtag takeaway um, to understand the differences uh, of what constitutes an Instagrammable takeaway in different parts of the UK. Um, and the results are quite different. So when you look at hashtag takeaway in London, some themes come out, so sort of artisanal takeaway coffee, uh, gourmet burgers, um, and also cooked breakfast, <coughs> interestingly. Um, but if we compare that to another region, say Scotland, different themes start to emerge. So confectionery came out quite a lot, pizza very popular, um, and cups of soup as well. Um, so you can see that even though the same word is used, takeaway, um, what people mean by that and what people are actually sharing differs a great deal in whatever part of the country you're in. Um, so what does language tell us about differing regional feelings? Um, so I mentioned uh, before that um, social media data is a huge scale. You have hundreds of thousands of posts, hundreds of thousands of really, really detailed comments. And what you can actually start to do is analyse the frequency of different vocabulary used to try and get under the skin of the topic matter to understand people's attitudes and feelings um, towards the subject. So I've taken um, a fairly contentious food trend, um, clean eating, which um, is essentially the avoidance of processed foods to varying degrees. That's where the contention comes in. Um, gathered um, all the mentions for that. And then essentially we've run a script. Oh dear, it's not showing. <laughs> uh. OK, it doesn't seem to, uh, the presentation, unfortunately, seems to have not uh, copied. Uh, but essentially, uh, what this map was showing us was the descriptive positive and negative words used in relation to the topic clean eating. Um, and what I would have shown you <laughs> is that um, around London and the southeast, positive descriptive words cluster uh, for clean eating. So things like saying it's cool and trendy and fashionable people were much more likely to describe the topic of clean eating in that way if they were living in those areas. Um, if we compared that uh, to negative descriptive words about the topic, um, we were finding things like weird or suspect coming up much more in uh, the northwest and northern Ireland. Um, so you can see that through the analysis of the language that people are using, you can really start to understand how people feel about a particular topic. Um, so finally, uh, we'll talk about um, over time period. Um, so I've chosen the trend poutine, which um, I guess you guys have probably come across it in like street food areas. I don't, I've never had it myself. I think it's chips and gravy. cheese and gravy. Yes, <laughs> thanks. Um, and essentially, we wanted to know how um, that trend had um, changed in popularity in different regions um, over time. 
So we collected lots of mentions of poutine, went back to 2014. And as you can see at the beginning of this time period from this moving bubble, uh, it's most popular in, in London to begin with. That's where it sort of lands in the UK. But as the time goes by, you start to see other regions in the UK catching up, um, especially the northwest. And then at the end of 2018, you actually see that um, the Northwest and I think Scotland as well have actually overtaken um, London in terms of popularity for this particular food topic. Um, so we've literally plotted with social data how this food trend has spread across and up the country, which is pretty cool. So. Uh, those are my five different uh, research techniques and different audiences. Um, so we've looked at brand reputation regionally. Uh, we've looked at uh, food trends, popularity in different places. Uh, we've looked at uh, what imagery tells us about different regions, about their opinions, the language they're using, what feelings uh, that betrays about them. Um, and then finally, how all of things, uh, things change over time. Thank you.